Boris Johnson taking us out of the EU without a deal would be historically and laughably undemocratic. Now, I'm not talking about the fact that pro-Brexit politicians promised people they could vote to leave without being made poorer because we come out with a deal. I'm talking about the fact that we voted to leave the EU on a ballot paper which said nothing about the relationship we'd have with the EU afterwards. Forget all the rhetoric about economics and sovereignty. The deal that we negotiated is Brexit. So is no deal. So is a Norway-style deal and a Canada-style deal. They all mean we leave the EU. The UK has only had one chance to define what relationship it wants to have with the European Union. That was the 2017 general election, in which 54% of voters voted for parties whose manifestos explicitly ruled out no deal. So for a country that called the EU undemocratic to be dragged out of the EU without a deal against the wishes of the majority of its voters by a prime minister that nobody even contemplated at the last election would be laughably and historically undemocratic. Well, Femi, again, welcome, because I want to be polite as we start out. <laughs> um, it's not like that. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> I'm interested, actually, because there's been a lot of talk about the Norwegian model, the Canadian model, the, Nox the Luxembourg model. I'm delighted Boris has agreed he'll go out with all of them and see what he can do with any, <laughs> any, any, one, any one of them. Um, if... Look, I hear what you say about the ballot, but, Femi, if you were in the slightest bit right, which you're not, you're wholly of wrong... Of course not. ..explain the support there is for the Brexit party, which, in a poll in the Times newspaper this week, is 1% behind leading the polls. You have the Conservatives at 24, you have Brexit at 23. Brexit is... I mean, it's on the tin. It's an unalloyed party. That is why the majority... Of the, I think, as Nigel Farage says, if there was a poll again, actually, there would be an even stronger representation to get Britain out, because a lot of people now feel, whatever happened three years ago, just get it done. Now, I could bore everyone to death with arguments that I've been with before, that I believe the European Union is collapsing. I was a, I was a lever, but a reluctant lever. These, all these guys have heard that before. So I'll just part that there. If you're right, then it sounded like, how come the Brexit Party is so successful? Well, let's look at what the Brexit Party actually did in the European elections. 54% of voters voted for parties who explicitly... Well, 54.5% in the European elections yep. voted for parties whose manifestos explicitly opposed no deal. Yes. Now, You're not the, saying Brexit Party won the, ele the those elections? They had the... They, they were the largest party. But well, that's, that's because, what I call a win. But that's because there were several parties for Remain. There were several parties for, for not having no, a no-deal no, Brexit. No, 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 the, if you're the only party offering a no-deal Brexit and there are several parties saying that we should have a second referendum, just because that their votes are split doesn't mean that more people want the thing that got fewer votes. Can I just interrupt for one second? Did the Brexit parties only... I know the only policy it had was Brexit, but was it specifically a no-deal Brexit? Michelle, you considered running for them. I mean, I would you have campaigned for a no-deal Brexit as opposed to just Brexit? Well, what I think, when you say you talk about undemocratic, what I think, and to be fair to you, I do actually respect... I've seen a lot of what your previous work, and I respect what you're doing because it's a cause you're passionate about and you're endeavouring to educate people about it, but I completely disagree with you. Um, and what I think is undemocratic is the mess that we're in now. We should never be three years on from <clears> this situation and have had our vote ignored and rejected and pushed back and pushed back. And it's something I feel very strongly about. So when we're now talking about a no-deal scenario, it's, it's for two parties to come together to create a deal, and it has to be a deal that works for both people. But whilst you're negotiating something, it is absolutely backward and then some to have removed no-deal from the table and to continue <clears throat> talking about removing no deal from the table. That, for me, makes me so frustrated. So if you're going to ask me the question, would I have campaigned for a no deal, I think that actually no deal is better than a bad deal. I do. I believe that mantra. I can, like... I, can I come in on that? I think well, can that I just if... remind everybody, you also campaigned in that election. In fact, there are more people did, sitting I... around this table than voted for you, but <laughs> do carry on. 46,000 people can be wrong. <laughs> um, uh, I think that... I mean, I'm absolutely with Femi on this. I think that... For if the governing Tory party that was responsible or governing oh. during the miners' strike, during poll tax riots, during austerity, during the financial crash, then impose no deal on this country, it, this party will never recover. Yeah. No deal, as every single sensible person in the country has pointed out, will cause a crash in the economy. Brother? It's mm. completely <laughs> irresponsible. Where does it put my brother? Yeah. Who, 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 I, well, you just said every single sensible person. I, I don't think, think anybody really it. knows where he is. <laughs> I'm saying <laughs> what I think. I mean, listen, right. as, to be fair, yeah. can we just... As, uh, you know, what we are seeing is two candidates duking it out, 
in a willy-waving contest to try and attract yeah. the votes of 160,000 Tory membership members who, for whom no deal has become a virility symbol for the, bre for the Brexit <laughs> yeah. um, I voters. Want to, well, let, let's see, I was gonna, about to say that she isn't her brother. Let's hear from her brother, see what he has to say uh -huh. about it. Yeah. Don't forget that uh, there will, of course, logically be available to the government if we are forced to, to come out and live. And this will be the decision of our European friends and partners, by the way. Let's be absolutely clear. It will be they who have decided not to give us the standstill that is so obvious. It will be their decision uh, not to go ahead. There will be a £39 billion dividend that we will be able to spend on mitigating any impact. Right, so he thinks it's the EU's fault if we go for no deal, but here's what his main rival has to say. No deal will be very scary to a lot of people. It's actually pretty similar. We're both saying that we don't want it, but if it's the only way to deliver Brexit, we'd do it. As Prime Minister, I will always be straight with people and no deal will be disruptive to businesses up and down the country, uh, disruptive to the farming industry, to the fishing community. Uh, and I am someone who comes from a business background. Uh, and I know what it's like when a business is under pressure because of a sudden change in the market that you can't control. So I think we can all agree on one thing, and that is that actually when people voted for Brexit, which they did, and my side lost, your side lost, your side lost, but uh, you kind of were a reluctant lever, I yeah. think, so your yeah. side reluctantly won yeah. and, and, uh, and Michelle won, right? So I think one thing we can all agree on is that nobody, yet, when they voted for Brexit, intentionally wanted a no-deal scenario because none of the leaders of the Brexit campaign were campaigning on that platform. They explicitly In fact, said they explicitly it would be a hard Brexit. Right? So, uh, I think we, it would behoove us to acknowledge that and so then we can recognise that actually this isn't a desired outcome and we should try and do everything possible to avoid not, it. Not to... What, what I would also just finally I'd, I'd say is actually what isn't probably helping us up until this is now and I'm going to be sensible. What probably isn't helping us up until this stage is the language and the discourse being used. So you've yeah. got Brexiters saying it's undemocratic. Uh, that the referendum hasn't been delivered when actually they tried to deliver it. And, you know, people didn't like Theresa May's deal. I didn't like Theresa May's deal. And we got, you know, our side also. I, sh I don't think we should call it undemocratic, what's happening now, because actually they're calling us undemocratic as well. And it's whether, you know, they're racist and we're traitors. And we end yeah. up in that kind of, you know, in the gutter. And I don't mm. think it helps us get out of the problem where... The reason we're in this problem is because nobody wants to compromise, nobody wants to budge from their positions. And the language we use actually entrenches us Firm. But where's, but the, where's you know? the definition of undemocratic if, let's say, the next Tory leader suspends or prorogues Parliament in order to force through something that nobody voted for, where there's no pl popular, i.e. you know, plebiscitary hmm. or parliamentary mandate yeah. for it? Well, I mean, I'd argue that the Prime Minister well, being selected as undemocratic, but, but actually that's well, our that's, system. But, but that, but that's, that's a broader that, conversation. That's the, that's the precise thing. Yeah. Brexit was completely undefined in 2016 yeah. because it could have resulted in all the different types of deals we could end up having. But the fact is, in 2017, the majority, 54%, voted for parties whose manifestos explicitly Tell ruled out no deal. Want? That makes no deal against that's the yeah. wishes Tell of the people. That's that? a good question, which only Michelle yeah. could ask mm. with such... What do you want, that? I'm Canada. saying that given that we were promised a deal, yeah. uh, mo most Brexit voters were promised a deal, it's only logical that given uh, we've now negotiated that deal, so that people get the chance to vote on that deal. Oh, what if there's no deal? deal? What if there's no deal? Do we have any time for any the, of this, the, re guys? the reason why it no. can't be no it's deal not. is because the, the moment you put no deal on the ballot paper, the Leave side will say, don't worry, no deal is only temporary, which means they'll be arguing for a deal so for the majority want, of their no deal so campaign. You want, a, you want a vote with Remain and Remain Light? It's not Remain Light. It it's, is. it's a deal. Are we out of the EU if we leave with the deal? It's not well, no, the deal. No, no, no. How are we even going to get Are we out of the deal? Are we out of the EU if we leave with the deal? Well, first and foremost, it depends on what that deal is. If you're in a situation whereby you cannot even strike your own trade deal. Are we out of the then EU? I would Please say, answer the question. Well, it depends what the deal is. No, no, no. Is. This, is, this is a matter you of legal of you, law. This is a matter you, of law. When we triggered Article 50, it meant that after two years or upon the uh, passing of the withdrawal agreement, which is what it says in Article 50 in those treaties, mm -hmm. the treaties no longer apply to us, which means we're out of the EU. Yeah. As a matter <clears> of <throat> law, mm -hmm. the deal we've just negotiated fulfills the referendum mandate. So if, that, if you don't like that, then clearly the referendum yeah. in 2016 wasn't right. specific enough. Practically, but, what's going to happen? In three weeks after Parliament comes back from conference season, we have three weeks with whoever the yeah. next PM is, likely yeah. to be Boris, what can we possibly achieve? 
leave in those three weeks. Not we, right? But we are. This I feel so frustrated. Like I said, I respect your position, <laughs> but it frustrates me because at the end of the day, the situation is we did vote, and you will be bored of hearing people repeat this sentence. We didn't vote for no but deal. we voted to leave the European Union. Now, what is no deal? No deal. If you want to say that, it's a formal set of arrangements. Now, if people had taken that seriously and businesses understood what mm. these arrangements look like, because when you say no deal, it's making out like there's no. nothing. That there are formal arrangements, yes. and if it was communicated and documented properly, businesses could prepare for that. And it's this toing and froing and blocking of this, and it really. Me off. Sorry, 